add this overwhelming urge to paint a pineapple. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today I want to do a little bit of acrylic painting. I took this weird notion about three or four days ago that I just wanted to paint a pineapple. <laughs> I have no idea where it came from. I haven't even eaten pineapple or anything to like prompt it or trigger it. Thankfully I've come to my senses and there's three reasons why I am not going to paint a pineapple. The first is obviously hashtag I am not a painter. Secondly, I've painted about three or four acrylic paintings in my entire life. And thirdly, pineapples are really freaking complicated. I talk about making things difficult for yourself. So I've picked another subject. It is still fruit. So we're going along the same vein and I'm going to paint an acrylic. I really wanted to paint an acrylic because I haven't done it in a while. So what I've got here is an Arteza canvas board. So it's just a canvas panel. It's 10 inches by 10 inches. For you metric people, that is 25.4 centimetres by 25.4. And in order to make this come to life, these canvas boards are primed already, but I want a black background. So I I'm going to gesso it with this rather large tub of black gesso primer and it is the Windsor Newton Galeria acrylic medium. I did have a little tube of it and decided that I should just go for it and buy it a massive leaf. I don't know why I needed a litre but it just seemed like a good idea at the time. So, so that's the first step. This is a fresh tub and I'm just waste not, want not. <laughs> Oh, feeling very frivolous. So this is just a cheap two inch brush, uh, synthetic bristles. And really, um, I just want to spread this out and try and get an even coat. Now, I've done a little bit of experimenting with these canvas boards and I have found that if you go in one direction first, and then um, like up and down, you know, if you're gonna go across the way the first time, it seems to give quite an even finish. So I'm just gonna wipe off the excess because there is, that was just off the foil. There is a lot of excess there, but I'm just like squishing that back into the tub. You know, we don't want to leave a lot of brush strokes or brush marks. And I've picked this brush just because it's to hand and it's nice and wide, so it's not gonna take us too long. And don't worry, I will wipe the desk off when I'm finished. Don't panic, everyone's like, oh, you're smearing it all over the desk. Yes, I know. We'll live, it's acrylic, it'll come off. So I've got the kind of thickness that I want down at the bottom here. Give that a little tickle, there we go. So now I'm just going to try and even it up all the way across. So you can see that's a little bit smoother than the top half there. And that's kind of, um, it's a combination of my brush strokes and how much paint is actually on the canvas. And I think I've got fairly even coverage there. So I'm just going to let that sit for a minute or two. I'm just going to gently take my brush in the opposite direction. Okay, so I'll leave that to dry and we'll come back and see where all the patchy bits that we've missed are. So this is the next day. We are dry and I have done round the edges of the canvas board as well. So we are ready to go. So when we're working in acrylic paint, we want to think about working in layers. So I'm starting off with my background and basically I want to have like a bunch of cherries in the middle. So the background, I want to be quite dark and quite leafy so that the red of the cherries pops out and that's why I opted for black gesso. So I've got my, uh, my, my big plastic palette here which I'm just going to keep to the side. So I want to mix a couple of shades of green first and keep this background quite dark. Now the colour of um, the leaves on cherry trees, uh, I used to have a cherry tree and uh, loved, loved just picking the cherries straight off and eating them. The, the leaves are a, a very yellowish green, you know they are um, what I would call like a spring green. So in order to mix up that colour, I have got here some ultramarine and some cadmium yellow and we'll just mix it up and see what we can get. But for the background, I want some darker and slightly different shades of leaves as well. So I've got some olive green here and I think that's a nice muted colour. So I'm just gonna splodge out some of that on my palette here. And I'm going to grab a fairly big brush as well. So I've got them, I've got quite a, got quite a few acrylic brushes now, it's getting a bit out of hand. Uh, this is one of the ones I really enjoy using and this came in an Artful subscription box and this is a number six. And I'm just going to use some very, very basic, basic leaf shapes. So the olive green in its pure form, I'll maybe turn this around just so that you can see the paint that I'm actually working with. We do have to work quite qu quickly because this acrylic dries quite quickly, but I want to try and darken this down a little bit. Now we do have to to do this very very carefully. Had to go and get my Mars Black, I'd left it through beside my easel. I'm going to squidge it in with some of this olive to give us a nice dark shade. 
there. So that is going to be our, our sort of background, our background most colour. So I'm not even too bothered about the shape of these leaves because it is going to be a background. So I'm just going to kind of start randomly because we're going to build up a couple of layers of this. And obviously most of the darker ones are going to be at the back. So we'll keep a, we'll keep a very sort of loose, rough shape here. And obviously as we build the layers of these leaves up, then we can start to overlap them and make them a bit more interesting, add a little bit more texture. So these don't have to be anything special at all. So just nice, simple, confident strokes. As I say, you're, you're on a background here, so you may know how I feel about backgrounds. Don't get too hung up on it. Don't make a big deal of it. Just do it. Because if people are paying more attention to your backgrounds, then you're doing something wrong, and it means you've done something wrong with the main part of your picture. Okay, off to a good start, off to a good start. Now this does dry fairly quickly, so we're not going to have to wait all that long, which is grand. I've just got a little rag on the side here and a, a big tub of water, and it's just so that I can clean everything off. So clean my palette knife off, knife off so it's ready for the next lot of paint. And I can just split off here that olive green. That's the sort of untainted one. So we can use that as our next colour. And then when we go to a lighter colour again, which will probably be the last layer, to be fair, I can add a little bit of white to it and lighten it up a little bit. We're almost dry. I've still got a few shiny parts here, but they're not bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and start on our next layer. Now, when I'm doing something like this in the background, I find it really helpful, especially when you're working on a square like this, to turn the to turn the canvas and it just gives you a bit more of a random pattern because we do tend to follow the same the same motions with our hand and we can, we kind of do it automatically because we're human beings, we're we're people. So, so there we go. This is this is just the straight olive green now. Just getting lots of this in. Get these leaf shapes down. And you'll see now that the colour's starting to starting to pop out a little bit more. And this is what we want, we'll just build it up. I actually find this quite relaxing. Again, there's no, there's no pressure at this stage, you know. We, we don't have to have things looking like things or not thinking about reflections or shading or anything. I'm just, just drawing, drawing some leaf shapes and it's great. Like, why would you not want to do this? So the next one's going to be lighter again. I've got some titanium white. Now you can see it is starting to look a little bit busier. It's still very subtle though. And by doing this, I don't want a really busy background. And then, you know, my, my cherries are kind of like languishing away, fighting with these. So they are, you know, these, these leaves are never meant to stand out. That's not what this is about. But we do want to have a little bit of variation. So mix in some white here. Now this is just the paint that was left, uh, so I'm not wasting a huge amount of paint here. So this colour again is going to stand out a little bit more. So we'll put some of these in. I really like this kind of like putty green colour. So again, just with the same brush, not doing anything different here, but I'm going to start layering up some of this. And then I'm going to revert back to the neat olive green. And that will be the last layer of our background leaves. So I'm going to have to pay a bit more care to my brush strokes with this because this colour is obviously going to be a lot more noticeable. So can't be quite as haphazard as we as we have been, but that doesn't mean that we still can't have fun with it. I've got this thing about the corners. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I'm not even too bothered about the size of these either. I'm just kind of, um. oh goodness me. Truthfully, I'm just kind of letting the brush do what it wants. <laughs> More fun that way. There's a woo hair on here. <laughs> it's really obvious because it's white. <sighs> Get off my painting. There's something so relaxing about this. I could actually just do an entire canvas and cover it in, in different shades of, of green leaves. I would actually find that really satisfying. I really enjoy working in acrylic. It's not something I do very often. Uh, Obviously, they just, well, time constraints are always a factor for me. They're always a factor. But I just find it a really fun medium to work in. And I always feel as if, like, I don't have to take my artwork too seriously. And that's not to say, I mean, there are loads of incredible artists that do incredible things with acrylic. But I always feel like, for, for me, because I'm used to working in pencil, which can be quite a serious medium and it's very tedious. <gasps> oh, I've just looked out the window and there's three calves 
careering down the field at a great rate of knots and they're just playing, they're having fun and uh, one of the mothers who's obviously a bit overprotective has legged it after them and she's mooing frantically and they are literally just giving her the run round, it's hilarious and the calves do it all the time, they know fine well okay, <laughs> anyway that, that's my entertainment sorted out when you're working with acrylic you want to get it while it's still wet, it's much easier to clean up because you can clean it up with water when it's still wet, if you leave it to dry it gives you a bit more of a problem so I'll just put out a tiny splodge of the uh, the neat olive green again and we'll grab some of this and we'll just build up some some more layers so you can see we're starting to busy up on the leaves now I'd be quite happy with a little bit of the the black of the background showing through that's not a problem but I would like to have more leaves than black background if you see what I'm saying so you can see it's quite a subtle effect but it's kind of nice <laughs> Every time I start another layer, I'm like, right, this one's going to be the last the last layer of leaves. And then I'm like, mm, yeah, I could just add another one in. So I've just mixed up some raw umber with a tiny bit of white. And I am working on my branch that's coming across here. So this is what our cherries are going to hang from. I see maybe there's a little stray branch that's found its way down here. I'll maybe have some leaves coming off it, that kind of thing. I want to have some light reflecting off as well. So while this is still wet, I'm going to take a little bit of just the titanium white. I'll pick a slightly smaller brush for this and just sort of mix that in. Let it do its thing with the, with the raw umber. Maybe just blend it in slightly so that it's not really, really stark. And now I'm just going to put in sort of little nodules where the, the actual cherries are going to hang off. So I'm going to have a little, a little rogue one off to the side here. It's just going to be like one little lonely cherry hanging down here. And then the bulk of my cherries I want to come from this section here. So yeah, in the middle. I'd also like a few leaves in behind, but leaves that are actually the colour of a cherry tree. So that's when I'm going to grab the cadmium yellow and the ultramarine and mix up a more of a, a true green. So I'll take a teeny bit of blue to start with and a big glob of yellow. We'll get mixing. Maybe a wee bitty more yellow. Fairly happy with that. And I just want to pop a tiny, tiny bit of white in it. Like the smidgest of smidges. So we're going to be paying a bit more attention to these now. And I think I'll have a leaf coming down here. Now when I'm thinking about the shape of these leaves, I'll get the basic shape in first. So they're, they're a lot sort of shorter and fatter than the ones we've been doing in the background but they still have a bit of a point on so we'll block in the colour first and as I say I want to have one or two in behind so I think I'll have one coming down here now the thing about the leaves on these is they do have like a, a sort of well I would call it a, a jaggy edge to them in that they have this sort of slight perforation that runs all the way round so we want to make sure we get that in too Again, I'm doing this while it's wet, just with a little bit of white on the end of the brush so that it mixes in with the paint that's already there. Okay, now that our branch has dried a bit more, I've got a little bit of yellow ochre here as well. And then just mixed that in with a little bit of the, the raw umber. And I've not really mixed it fully. Just get this sort of top edge of some of these parts of the, the branch. So all of our stems are coming out of one area and it's going to be quite quite a central point. So I'm going to start here with white, which sounds a bit crazy, but I promise it's not. I'm going to introduce some permanent rows because the stems of these, um, they do they do venture into red, but at one point they are, uh, they're, they're kind of pinkish. So if we start in here, maybe zoom in a little bit now and then just grab a bit of white. Then we've got that nice gentle gradient. And they have a sort of like, this part's like almost speckled. So if I just stick in, oh, that was a mistake. And then we can put in the shape of our cherry. Okay, so this little cherry off to the side here on its own, that's just gonna be there hanging in there, doing its thing, minding its own business. I just wanted to get placement in first. So I'm gonna have a big, like a big, big beefy 
Big beefy cherry here, oh my goodness. I just want to work away on these stems now. Just get a second layer of this red down on these background cherries. Okay, so I've added in a few more bits and pieces and I'm starting to work on these uh, these background cherries now. So I'm going in between the um, this ultramarine blue and mixing it in with a little bit of the red because I want these ones to be darker at the back. And we're going to have a highlight on this side, so it's really difficult to show you in the light when it's wet. Hopefully I'll be able to see a bit better when it's dry. So I've put this, uh, this stock in for reference here. I will tidy this up, but it's more just for my my tiny little mind than anything else. Oh, that was way too much blue! <laughs> oh no. This one is going to be tucked right in at the back, so I, d I did want... Oh my goodness, I'm flicking water everywhere and everything. Oh no. Just you dry there and don't make a mess. <laughs> um, that's uh, That wasn't quite the, the, the volume of of blue that I had in mind, but okay. So this this is gonna be a really dark cherry, okay? Mm -hmm. This is gonna be way, 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 way in the background. And this one down here, this is gonna be like the Mac Daddy cherry. This is like the big one. This is the one that you're gonna pick off the tree because it looks so juicy. Again, I'll just get this filled in. Just get that first layer down. That's a beauty! I need to put my other little cherry in over here as well. Kind of forgot about it. How rude. So this one's overlapping. That one's a bit heart shaped. It looks a bit more like a cherry than a, uh, a cherry. It looks a bit more like a strawberry than a cherry. We will have to remedy this. Now I've got another one to add in here as well. And it's going to be in behind. So it doesn't matter if I go over the top of it. That was more like a guideline for myself rather than the actual finished line. Um, it's just to help like map things out in my head because I'm not very good with stuff like this when I'm painting. See when I'm drawing, not a problem. But I've got the added stress of the fact that I have to try and control a paintbrush. Which, I'm not going to let that stop me painting something. Even if it's rubbish, I'm still going to paint it. But I need as much help as I can get. So that's kind of what we're doing. Okay, yeah, so that's it. That, that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. See, this is, this is the big boy down here. This is the big boy. Been saying that a lot. Whoops. <laughs> like, I want this to be super red. Super red. So that when I stick that highlight in, it's like, you know, it like jumps out at you. Now I've seen, now I've got a two-tone cherry and I was trying to avoid that because that's not what we want. But you can see, I know it's wet, it's actually really difficult for you to see in the light. Maybe I should prop it up, that's a better idea. So you can see I've got like quite a, quite a dark, I should have done this like half an hour ago. <laughs> but I want this to be like super, super saturated on this side so that as I say when I put that little red that little red highlight what is wrong with me today when I put that little white highlight and it's just gonna ping out on the paper canvas thing stuff paintery things okay right mm-hmm mm. still don't feel like that low part here that's not pronounced enough can you see why I don't take myself too seriously when I'm doing this I'm going to have to leave this to dry because I'm actually lifting more paint off than I'm putting on now. Get that contrast in that I'm always banging on about so that you can see the edge of that one. Maybe I just need to be braver with the... Oh, that's interesting. That's kind of what I was trying to do earlier. So really what I've found out is not being brave enough. Just not being brave enough. I don't know what is wrong with me today, but I can't control a paintbrush, clearly. Shouldn't be allowed to be a YouTuber. I can't control a paintbrush. Right, okay, that's looking a bit red, or, 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 or. and while that's wet, I'm going to stick in my darker colour here. Okay, so the other thing I want to do now is to really mute down the uh, my, my little branches here. I've put a little bit of green in, I don't know if you can see that there, it's very, very slight, but it's not enough. Just to take the starkness of the white off, because obviously we are, uh, we want the highlight to be the... That sort of main point, don't we? <laughs> Here we go, get some green in there. Okay, so it is the next day again and uh, true to form, I just couldn't leave this alone and I ended up adding in another cherry down here just because 
Well, just because I wanted to, really. So in this little interim period between last night and today, I've added a tiny spot of pink to the top left-hand edges of these, and you can see that really clearly on the camera. And what I'm going to do is that's just a sort of prerequisite for where the highlight's going to go. So I'm going to do this little cherry down the bottom here, or this big cherry down the bottom here, and get it up to scratch, and then we can finish off by putting our highlights in. Now that the darker paint has dried, this ultramarine that I was using wet and wet with the... Um, with the, the red, the cadmium red, it's actually settled down really nicely. I was worried it was going to be too blue, but we seem to be okay, so I'm actually really happy. And with with acrylic paintings, like this is all just a wee adventure for me because it's not something I'm well versed in, but I do find it fun and I do enjoy it. So it's nice that you guys can kind of come along for the ride. So of course I washed up everything last night, so I'm starting from scratch today. And the first thing I'm going to do is just grab some of this... Uh, this cadmium red and it's just it's just straight cadmium red it's not uh, mixed with anything or anything like that and take my big brush again this was the artful brush that I was using and just make sure that the edge of that is damp so I've all the same supplies as well that I was using the other day and just get my paintbrush in there and it was it was like three or four layers of this because we're working on such a dark background oh, I've got a pip here in my brush that's not going to help us I don't think Pippi here would be any good for making paintbrushes. So there we go, build that colour up. So that's coming out quite nicely already. Now my, my stock got a bit wonky here. Uh, so I'm going to try and fix that, hopefully. So I can do that with my smaller brush. Again, just make sure that's wet. Now the, the start of the stock, see I did start with white again. So I'm keeping things nice and easy for myself here, which is slightly unusual for Gem Gem. And I was trying to think about the natural line of where the stock would come round because it's kind of disappearing behind this leaf. So it's maybe going to come down like that and down there. So I can actually cut off the, the mistake that I've made and thin down this side of the stalk. Now again, this is the advantage of using straight colour. It was the it was the olive green that I was using. So again, if I just squish a tiny little bit of that out the tube, I don't need a lot of that. And I can actually just go over the top of it. Again, it'll probably take a couple of layers, but I can literally just start to erase that okay so this is starting to dry now and this is the last time where i went in with the the ultramarine and kind of mixed it in and again like this is this is what's so cool about acrylic paint it's it's really versatile and i like the fact that i can use this wet and wet but you can also build up like really interesting layers and lots of texture and you can use super bright colours and you can use really muted colours and it is just a really forgiving medium. It takes a lot to master I think, it's not just something that you pick up and all of a sudden you know you're making these sort of wonderful beautiful uh, paintings but it's a really nice medium to learn to paint in and I kind of wish I'd started with acrylic rather than watercolour because I think I would probably have more confidence in my watercolour painting. If I'd learned, you know, the, the basics of painting techniques, if I'd learned them in acrylic, I think I would maybe maybe um, get on a little bit better with watercolour. But again, I, I actually enjoy watercolouring now. I, I didn't, to begin with, I really, really didn't like it at all. And I thought, oh, painting's really not, not something I'm going to get any pleasure out of. But thankfully I persevered. Okay, so I think I want a little bit more of the, the cadmium red on this side. Um, these these ones are kind of like done in terms of the colour. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to take a teeny weeny weeny wee brush. So this um this really is a detail brush. You <laughs> see, oh so small. And this is the three stroke zero, and it's the, the Art Space synthetic brush again. So it's the same company that I was using for the other one as well. And these both came in up crates. And again, just not not being a painter because, as we know, I am not a painter. I would rather err on the side of caution and start really small, and I can build the highlight up if that's what I want to do. Really, really important here. Now the good thing with this is most of this is dry. It's only this section that's not, so I can lean here and give myself a nice steady hand. Oh, there we go. This is, this is, yeah. <laughs> and by curving that, excuse me, by curving that highlight, we help to show the shape of the fruit as well, which is nice. Now I've been kind of swithering with this one. This one's kind of tucked in at the back here and I don't think I'm going to put a highlight on that. But this one here, it's going to be um, interrupted by the stalk. So I have to kind of try and bear that in mind. I think something like that, maybe a bit thicker on the top part there. So I'm just putting this highlight in amongst the 
pink put down there because obviously if the light's shining on it that area of the fruit is going to be lighter but there's going to be that certain point where the light's hitting it directly and that's what's going to give you your white and it may not be in real life it may not be a stark white but for the purposes of what i'm doing here white looks good stands out and that's what we want and this little brush is just a ticket just while I've got the white out here as well, I want to mix in some of that with some of this raw umber again. And I want to bring a bit more dimension to my tree branch because I feel as if it's kind of lost against the background. It is quite, um, quite dark. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of yellow ochre with the raw umber like we did before, but I'm going to add a tiny spot of white to it as well. And just with this teeny tiny brush, I can pick out certain sections of it. Now I'm not mixing it entirely. So we have got a bit of a marbled effect here. But you can see that that's just going to help me pick out sections of my branch. I say you don't have to do this all the way down. The human eye is very good at joining the joining the dots as it were. So if you give if you give a rough indication of the direction of something even if the colors not immediately obvious immediately obvious the uh, the brain is very good at, at picking that up and saying oh well that clearly you know logically that belongs to that so We'll, we'll make it so. Lovely jubbly. Right, now we can work on the stem while that's drying. So again, if you remember, it was this permanent rose colour that I was using, which I absolutely love this colour. And it's strange because I'm not really a, I'm not really a pinky person. A pinky person, <laughs> like, a, like a pinky person. Pop a wee bit of that in at the top there. And then down at the bottom here, kind of dot it in. And then grab a little bit of white. And just blend that in and then I'd mixed a sort of true green which is what I'd used for some of these leaves here and the, the green parts on the stalk so again I'll do that and that was that was just um some cadmium yellow and a spot of the the ultramarine I'm really pleased with my highlights <laughs> so easily amused oh my goodness it was a bit like the the when we finished up the coloring chat and beauty of horror I was so pleased with my waves <laughs> I was like I was just looking forward to the waves Oh, good grief. Okay, so this last cherry is quite dry now. So I'm going to grab some of this permanent rose. And I literally just like sort of dabbed it on. I added a little bit of white, but just like a smidge. It's not very scientific, is it? And then I just kind of like blobbed it on. <laughs> but again, following that same shape, you know, this sort of curve, if you like, just where the light's obviously going to be bouncing off. That is so much like it's so more blah, 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 it's so much more obvious on the camera than it is IRL. So onto the final highlight and then we are done. Maybe have this as a broken highlight. Oh yeah. Okay guys, that is it. I am going to call it quits at that. I'll sign this at the bottom. Okay, and there we have the finished article. And it's a lovely bunch of cherries with a nice textured interesting background and you can see that when i tip it in the light so you've got so you've got that extra sort of dimension i'm really glad i didn't paint a pineapple <laughs> and uh, yeah this is just this is so much fun like i had so much fun doing this and this is actually something that i would uh, i would hang up you know I, I quite like this sort of idea it's not just to feel as if i've painted it just for the sake of painting it I, I would love to hear your thoughts i would also love to hear if you have tried working in acrylics and whether you like them or not or maybe it's your main medium i would love to hear all about that in the comments because this is very new to me and i say i just i just think it's a bundle of fun and it's not too bad to clean up afterwards it's not like oils where it gets a bit a bit messy so thank you very much for coming and joining me today i've had an absolute ball over the last three days and you can check out the stash shop today it is sunday so this is the day where i put new items in we have a lovely selection of used good quality art supplies we have a selection of new art supplies and we also have cave sticker selections and a few prints there for you as well if you fancy having a nosy please stay safe take care of each other and i will see you back in the cave on thursday for another video bye for now everyone